Hello everyone. So today we're going to take a look at AWS Fargate and um, deploying containers to that platform um, with GitLab, one of our favorite tools. Um, the other day I had to quickly put together a presentation, um, had a presenter back out um, the day before for a um, little meetup group and so I had a few hours one evening to try to figure out what to do for a presentation. And I had always been wanting to try uh, try out Fargate or um, Web App for Containers in Azure. So I decided to start with uh, AWS, try that out first, see how easy it would be to deploy uh, in a CI CD pipeline. And so um, if anybody is um, unfamiliar with Fargate before we get into the Details, it's a new service, fairly new from AWS, um, that's supposed to take a lot of the work out of running and managing your container cluster. Um, they used to have EKS, I think still do, ECS. Um, this is kind of an extension of that. And um, according to them, it's the power of leveraging Lambda and containers. And so it acts like serverless. You just deploy and it manages everything for you. If there's no cluster to manage, seamless scale, it all sounds wonderful, right? Um, so we're going to try it out and uh, see how it works. So first, let's take a look at um, what it looks like when you log in. So you're first going to need to obviously go into AWS console and get started creating a Fargate cluster. Um, and before you do that, you're probably going to want to um, create a repository, maybe or maybe not. If you're using Docker Hub or another publicly accessible um, place for your containers to be stored, um, then that will work too. In my case, I had a private Nexus repository where we're storing all our containers, and so I had to have a way to get the container to a public publicly accessible um, repository for Amazon to be able to pull that. So went ahead and set up the repository here in ECR. Um, it was fairly easy. Um, and then got into creating a cluster. Now there's a couple of different ways you can create a cluster. You can write a CloudFormation script. You can click Create Cluster and then go manually uh, configure all the settings. And from what I can tell, just having looked at this for the first time a few days ago, there seemed to be a lot of settings. Um, so not knowing uh, too much about what I was doing, I decided to try the wizard. Um, and the wizard made it really easy to go ahead and create a cluster, and then it created everything for you, and it kind of guided you. So it gives you a little diagram of how, uh, how the services um, um, are laid out. And, you have your container definition at the center, then your task definition um, outside of that, which kind of contains the um, details um, about your containers and then a service on top of that, and then the cluster on the outer level. And so that's kind of the different steps the wizard would take you through. And so the first place is you configure your container, tell it where your image is, the container name, um, the ports, this is very important. You want to put in their ports that your container is listening on. Um, and you would save that and then you would go on. It would create your task definition. So I'm going to go ahead and put some stuff in there. mapping so we can show how to do the load balancer. Load balancer is also important if you want it to be accessible from the internet. So now it shows our container definition and task definition are done. It's going to automatically create a service for us, give it a name, create the security groups. Um, you pick a load balancer type and it will go ahead and create that for you and automatically plumb it up to the um, container. Yes. 
we already have a cluster called default, so we're going to be really creative and call this default2. And it's going to create a new VPC ID, automatically create all the subnets that it needs. We're going to click Next, review all of our choices here, create. And we're going to sit here and watch it create a new cluster. Pretty darn easy. A lot less options and screens to go through. And I would say probably a lot less work than manually um, building out a cloud formation template as well. And especially if you're only creating a handful of clusters, um, this might be the way to go. Um, if you don't have to do it over and over and over and over again. So while that's running, let's go um, back and take a look at our existing cluster called default. We'll notice that there's one service, one running task. Now how did how did this get there? Um, well, obviously it looks like we have a service running. Um, task definition so that all looks green so we got there by putting this into a CI CD pipeline and deploying it from the GitLab instance we're going to just hop over here to GitLab and take a look and see what that looks like and so this is a demo app Spring Boot um, Hello World app that we put together a while back for demo purposes and uh, the last time we took a look at this, um, it was demoing, deploying to multiple OpenShift clusters. Um, and so in the interest of time, uh, because it was late at night as well, I just edited this existing pipeline and added in the pieces to um, push the same container out to Amazon that we were pushing into the private OpenShift cluster. And so I'm not going to go too too much into some of the um, some of the existing stuff that was in there. We can do that in a different video. But basically, we had a bunch of stages set up, uh, build stages, build package, scan. Um, we're doing some sonar, doing some clear, and then we're deploying to the different environments. So we basically just added in um, a new deployment phase, call it sandbox. Um, and so here's our Maven and our build steps where we're doing sonar cube scans. We're going to do a Maven build, then we're going to do our Docker build and actually create the image, and we're pushing it to our internal Nexus host, um, just like usual. So all this stayed the same. Um, and we do our scanning. Now we're going to deploy to AWS Fargate. And so because the GitLab runner runs inside of a container, first issue I ran into was that Amazon was complaining that the times were out of sync. So after a little bit of Googling, I um, figured out, yeah, I'm going to need to go ahead and set the time inside the container. So that's the first step that we're doing. Um, the next thing we're doing is we're installing the AWS tools. Um, pip install AWS CLI, and we're doing everything, all the dependencies for that. So then after that's installed, and, and by the way, I got most of these from reading multiple different blogs that people have put together, as well as the Fargate documentation, and kind of picked what uh, looked like the easiest um, path forward. You know. Certainly, if you're going to do this in production, you might enhance some of these steps and, and put in some additional testing things. But for now, it works. It was a good, um, good first shot. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to log in to our internal local Nexus. We're going to pull the image that we built and pushed er in the earlier Docker build step. We're going to export our AWS secrets, which are stored as GitLab secrets in this project. 
Um, then we're going to do a, a login to the AWS repository, internal repository, and um, thanks to someone who already figured out that I guess it has an extra carriage return when you run this command, so we strip that out. Um, then we're going to tag it. Um, we got this URL from our um, Amazon Container Registry when we set that up. So I'm going to tag it with latest. Um, one of the things we'd probably do in a real one is go ahead and use the um, pipeline ID or some sort of other number maybe so we would be able to track the, the um, container versions throughout the environments. So then we're going to push this back into the Amazon um, container repository. And then we're basically just going to register it. So we're going to do an ECS register task de definition, and that comes from a JSON file, which is very similar to an OpenShift YAML file. And we'll take a look at this in a minute. But it basically describes the um, it basically describes the what what you're pushing up there in the container and and the different options that it needs memory and CPU. So then we're going to do an update service. Point to our cluster, what's the service name, task definition, and the region. And voila, it does it for us. Very cool. And uh, also similar to OpenShift, it um, does a rolling update. And so when we do this push, um, it does a clean um, spin up of the new one and a clean shutdown of the old service. And it shows you that um, inversion way. And so if we hop back over here. And we take a look at the service. We'll see that the last time we did it, it was the ninth time. So we've pushed this up nine times. And um, it's versioned each one of those. You can hop in and look at the container that's running, the details on the container, port, list, list and on where it logs. And, and, and all this information is pulled from the JSON file. Um, um, that we're about to look at. And you can also look at the version here. So so what does that JSON file look like? This is a really basic version. And so basically <clears throat> the Amazon task execution role um, was our log driver, group, region, our host port, protocols, Where's the image? That's very important. Um, any constraints, memory, et cetera, et cetera, network mode, CPU. And then if you had any volumes to mount, it would be in there. There's a lot of other options you can add in here, um, but this is kind of the basic set after a couple of dozen tries and having to tweak this, finally um, got a good, uh, good working set. And if we take a look at the uh, service definition app.yaml from an OpenShift deployment, or basically Kubernetes, um, looks pretty much the same. So this is a deployment config, um, same kind of information. Um, many replicas, app name, um, project name, container image, etc. All right, so let's take a look at the pipeline itself when it ran looks like it ran we're still having issues with the clear scanning so we'll just kind of skip over that so we do our build so in our cube scan or docker build <clears throat> first thing we're going to do is deploy it to the sandbox and so we want to take a look at that you see all the output um, and when it does the updates it basically spits back out a bunch of JSON I'm to show you all the things that got updated and changed and what the active configurations are. Um, so if you want to read through all that, you can. So pretty cool. Looks kind of similar. Yeah, we did added a little smoke test like we did on the rest of ours. So once we deployed it, we just did kind of a little ping against the URL. So what we get back, nice little hello world. So we look at our dev deployment. 
Obviously it looks different because this is OpenShift, but we see there's running. So kind of neat to have different ones in the same pipeline, using the same scanning procedures. Um, all right, well, that's it for today.